This video is a quick look at Codesys Soft Motion over EtherCAD. There'll be other videos with more detail to follow. Here I'm at the Codesys North American store, where I've already downloaded and installed the development environment as well as a soft PLC. I'm doing my soft PLC on PLC Next. Be sure to read the notes for your soft PLC of choice. Here you'll notice that they say that PLC Next firmware minimum version supported is 2019.6 and this seems like a very important note. It says 2021.0 is not yet supported. I've prepared my PLC Next by putting in the 2020.0.1 long-term support firmware. Now the file you'll download for PLC Next will have end in a dot package suffix and that brings a question of well what do I do with that? And then I found here on the tools pill down menu the Codesys installer will let you select and install a dot package file. Once your dot package file is installed you'll find on the tools pull down menu that you'll have a new one called update PLC Next. Enter in your login credentials, the IP address of your PLC Next, and what you want to install, click install and it takes care of the rest. You can monitor the output in the window at the bottom. Now when you create your new project you'll be creating one Codesys control for PLC Next. Before I go into configuring the axes, I just want to talk about what they are. These are Festo CMMT-ST EtherCAT stepper drives and Festo slides, motors, and accessories. Now here I have the PLC Next. I have the side cart uh, Ethernet port, um, but you don't need that. As a matter of fact, I, I was unsuccessful doing EtherCAT using that port. So yeah, I think you want to use the port built into the bottom of the PLC Next. Other targets I've used is this Schneider Edge Box, which is an ARM-based Linux device, and then this basic line to Phoenix Contact PC, which I could not make work with Windows, gave me an error about EtherCAT real-time hardware issue, but it does work fine with Linux. After a little reading, I've determined that Windows 10 IoT is just not intended to be a real-time operating system. Um, so it, it just wasn't deterministic enough to run EtherCAT appropriately. But Linux on the same hardware works fine. Next was to have the CMMTST devices available to add into my Codesys project. So I went on to the Tools pull-down menu and Device Repository. And it was very confusing because I was easily able to find these CMMTST EtherCAT devices, but they don't work with soft motion. Some Google searches led me here where I kind of made the note here that th this 21 indicates 4.0.21, uh, which is the newest version, which is what I downloaded. Um, but it also requires version 21 inside your servo amplifier. So you're going to wind up downloading two things. One is this top one, which gives you a dot .package file, which you install using the package manager, tools, Kodi Sys installer, and then the firmware package, just a little further down on the same list. Once I downloaded that, it gave me these two pieces. One was the firmware that I needed to put into the amplifier itself. And then the other one is another device that you can import into your device repository. But if memory serves me correctly, this was the wrong one. The one I needed came in with the first file we installed, the Codesys function blocks. So when you look in your device repository, so now in the device repository inside Codesys, you'll see the CMTST soft motion version I'm looking for with the 4.0.21 and the 21 indicating that my stepper needs to have, my stepper drive needs to have version 21 something firmware. Now a large portion of the setup of my CMMTSTs was done in Festo Automation Suite. Thank you, Dave Thomas, for all the help. And um, we just basically put in the hardware that I have. And it, it was a wizard we'd used. I think it was the start first setup. And then we also, during the wizard, we set things like the homing routine, which here we have a homing uh, negative stop, which was to a torque. And then I also had to reverse the axes here. And then I did have to change the tuning. I had some oscillations, and I, I can't remember exactly where that was, but it was just a quick tuning adjustment. Now I added my EtherCAT soft motion master here. And Dave had recommended... Uh, 8 milliseconds or 8,000 microseconds. One thing I've learned the hard way over a lot of time wasted uh, was that this 8,000 just affects this EtherCAT task that gets added when you put the soft motion EtherCAT master in the system. That 8 winds up here. You don't have to adjust this. It's adjusted in the other window. 
The other thing is your motion function blocks need to be in that task. When I had them out of it, I had all kinds of strange error messages. Adding the steppers was, or the stepper drivers was very easy. Right click, add device or insert device and just pick them right off the list. Ethercat's a strange protocol for me being a, I think it's a layer two protocol uh, where the IP addresses don't matter at all. Uh, that was very confusing. And it, what matters, and you can't have switches in between, not, not ones that are not designed for EtherCAT. So what matters is the order that they're plugged into. These drives have a port on the top and bottom. The top is in, the bottom is out. So you wind up daisy chaining through. And when they're detected in the software, if you use the detection feature, they're detected in order. But you can also just right click and drop them in. They'll be correct if you have them wired in that order. Now, if you're EtherCAT master, I, I guess I'd recommend starting off with 8,000 microseconds uh, because that's what's working for me. And then you can select which Ethernet adapter your device is going to use by selecting its MAC ID, which clicking the select button makes you log into the controller and picking your adapters. Or if you know the device name, like in my case, it's just ETH0. Now, I just tried to log in and I got no connection to the device. Please rescan. Now, this is one because you haven't installed the, the runtime yet which is done through the tools update PLC next thing, or you're still using demo mode and a couple of hours has passed and it's timed out. Now this is a PLC next runs Linux. So I, I sign in to the PLC next and it asks me for the password. It's written on the front of it. You have to sign in as admin. And then I set up a root password, uh, pseudo PASSWD. And then once I've done that, <clears throat> I can just SU to the, to the root user. And then this command here will restart the PLC next control. So if I lose connection to my device, I can now just simply hit up arrow, hit enter, and it will just restart and I'll have another two hours. Of course, you can always just cycle power to the PLC next as well. But the network name you want in PLC next is ETH zero. It's the default network name and it's the one that works. Now, because we did the setup of the axes in Festo automation suite, we are set up for millimeters. So I set up software limits. These are slides. They're actually 500 millimeter slides, but I just set conservative limits. And with Dave's help, he told me that we max out, I think it was 150 millimeters per second. So I set it a little, little bit lower than that. And we selected some reasonable XLD cells. And he says, I don't understand jerk, but he said as a rule of thumb, set it to 10 times faster than your XLD cells. In scaling mapping, I told it it was linear axes. I left the 1000 in there based on the scaling we've done in the amplifier, which was the wizard did it. I didn't make any changes to it. Um, I was told that this will make it so that we're back into working in millimeters, which that's perfect. Now I've double clicked on my device. I've put in 2.10. I think in your case, it's probably gonna be 1.10. I happen to have a side cart, but you'll probably be using the same port for both <clears throat> EtherCAD and programming. And then it came up with all this information. My first login, it made me set a username and password. So pay attention. So you've got to remember what your usernames and passwords are. And then after that, when you log in, it simply asks you for those credentials that you set earlier. So now I've entered my credentials. OK, and it should log me into the controller. And of course, if the programs are different, it will pop up a box saying, do you want to download? OK, so if you're lucky, it'll log in and download. And you'll be able to see that your devices are up. Now, these are in orange because they're running in demo mode. They will time out. Uh, a great place to see your errors is when you double click on the axes and then just go to the general section and then read the errors here. Currently there is no error. When using Windows 10 IoT, I got something about real-time hardware error. If I set the update rate too high of the EtherCAT, I see an error here saying lost synchronization. There is more information here. The license is missing or invalid. It's running in demo mode, which is why they're orange. Now, sometimes when the demo time expires or I do a download, I wind up with an error on my EtherCAT bus. And what's been working well for me is to just stop the controller, do an online reset cold, and then restart the controller. Now, this has taken a while at times, up to like 30 seconds, for them to come back online. But uh, it's been pretty quick recently. They're back online now. Now, reading some tutorial online six months ago, I, I learned to create an access group as I've done here in this list. And then if you've used the soft motion version of these devices, then you'll have them available to select here as your A and B axes. I've done a two axis H gantry 
and I've selected my two axes here. I believe this was here by default, but that's the settings. With that access group created, I now use SMC group power to enable my servos or steppers or get them rotor lock and so that they can be used uh, with this function here. Now I used a couple of MC home blocks, fed them in my new X, which is the name I've given this drive, and my new Y, the name I've given this drive. And then I just set up some I.O. Um, and Dave from Festo was the one that suggested the minus three millimeter position for the end of homing. Other blocks I've put in is MC Jog, and again, passing them my new X and my new Y, the accesses, and then some bits for Jog Forward, Jog Reverse, the velocities, and so forth. And because I kept crashing my axes, or hitting the software limits that I had defined, Dave suggests that I put in these MC Reset blocks, which saved us an enormous amount of time, because you can just reset and move on. Now, please remember this is going to be an overview and not thorough. So then I created a visualization and connected it to the blocks that I just showed you. Here are the bits for the homing routines. Here are the bits for the reset blocks. And jog forward, jog reverse for each of my axes and the ability to set a speed for it. And since we'll be watching and using the visualization, there's a couple of other things here. Uh, this gantry that we're actually going to be able to watch moving. And then this button here, this is do code. Now these will come later. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about those in just a minute. Okay, now I've downloaded and am online with a device looking at my visualization. So I'm going to do Home X. You'll see the X slide moving to the left, bumping the end and moving off. Home Y, you'll see the vertical here dropping down, hitting the end and moving off. And then I've set the jog speed at 100 millimeters a second. Now I've got my jog forward, jog reverse for both axes. And if I bump it into the software limits by bumping it into the end, then I get an error on my servo amplifier, which I can reset because I have the reset blocks. So now I wanted to do something more advanced. So I right click on application, added a CNC routine, and then I found here that in the CNC pull down menu that I got, there was an import from DXF file. So we had a DXF file, which was a logo for PLC Next Technology, and we were able to import it. That gave me this G-code. From memory, it did not work right out of the gate. I had to add a couple of things in the G-code at the very beginning, which had to do with setting the speeds. I believe it was some of this right here. I'll have to go back and review my notes, but hopefully you know G-code better than I do. When I brought in the first CNC block, I also got this CNC settings thing that came with it. I didn't change it, so whatever it is, it came in by itself. The blocks that make this work is the SMC interpolator block here. It's a large block, but I didn't use very much of it. This was the, all I really needed of that block. And then there was a block that pulls out the positions of the two axes, which I have here. And then I had these two blocks, which was to control the axes by position. And I fed those information from the upper two blocks. And then there was a block that was discussed that could show me the visualizations, that would control the visualization that you saw on the screen. So I added that block, giving it the X and Y axes and the limits for those axes. Now the data in for the interpolator block was simply the G code or the MyCNC, the address of it. And then I just have a bit to fire it, do it. So I've fed the block MyCNC. MyCNC is a picture of the PLC, tech, PLC Next technology with logo. And then I just go to my visualization. I've already honed the axes. I'm just going to say go. You'll see the visualization take off immediately. And then, of course, you can watch the slide in action drawing out that logo. Now that was intended to be an overview, not detailed. If you're looking for more details, I'm happy to share more information as well as a copy of the project. Just reach out. Thanks.